Hey y'all, welcome to the inaugural episode of Sounds Like a Drum. This day and age, getting a good sound is the one thing that an awful lot of people don't know how to do. Everybody can play, everybody can get chops out, but what does it sound like when you do? And we're gonna start with snare drums because the snare drum is the center of the drum set and you gotta know how to tune your drums. Quick rundown of terminology that we're gonna use when we're talking about snare drums or any drum. Edge of the drum is the bearing edge, top and bottom. Indentation, where the strings or the straps for the snare wires cross is the snare bed. Snare mechanism, snare butt plate. And uh, 10 lugs aside on this lovely 1970s Superphonic. Starting off today with an Evans UV-1. Uh, I chose this head because pretty much every manufacturer makes a coated 10 mil thickness single ply drum head. And this is one that I use a lot. Doesn't really matter which one you choose, but I figured since this is sort of the standard, we'll start with this. So the first thing you wanna do when you get your fresh head out of the box, set it on the drum, see if it tips or if it touches everywhere with the bearing edge. This one, laying nice and flat. There aren't any high spots. It doesn't rock when you set it on there. If you have ever taken a head off of one drum and put it on another drum, sometimes you can see that they become sort of fitted to that instrument and they don't work on another drum. So starting with a fresh head, always the best thing to do. We still have the bottom head off and we're gonna get the batter head sorted out first. Now there's a lot of different ideas about where to start when you first put it on the drum. I personally think that first thing to do is get all of the screws just finger tight. Not tight, but just so that they're all touching the hoop at about the same tension. No drum key yet, just fingers. Now when I'm first tuning up a brand new head, I don't go for a stick, I go for a mallet, soft mallet. Marimba, timpani, something like that. The reason for this is that the high overtones around the edge that people usually kind of listen to when they're tuning can be deceptive. You might feel that the head is actually in tune when the true note of the head is not in tune with itself. And you don't get the same kind of girth in the sound. You don't get the same kind of feeling like you can play into the drum and like it gets bigger the harder that you hit it. So I use a mallet when tuning to bring out the lower tone from each of the lugs. Right now, it's about as low as it can go. <laughs> it's making almost no sound at all. I've got all of the keys finger tight, and I'm gonna do one round, starting with any of the lugs, in a star pattern, where I do somewhere between a quarter and a half turn to one lug, cross over, do the same thing, go to the one next to where I started, cross over, next to where I was, all the way around, and then listen to how it sounds. All right, we made it all the way around. At this point, find the highest one. I think it's that one right there. Do a little matching. Every time you try to match to that, do both sides. This is starting to sound pretty even now. None of them are jumping out. I don't hear much kind of dissonance between any of them. People go back and forth about this next thing. I do it with drums, but not in the extreme. When you get it to an even pitch, just a little bit of pressure in the middle of the head. And this isn't for stretching the head, which people tend to say it is. It's actually for making sure that there isn't any tension because of friction between the head and the edge of the drum. It's just making sure that it's gone all the way 
even and not pulling against the shell anywhere. It's less of a thing with metal drums. It's more of a thing with wood drums. Um, sometimes people do crazy things like putting paraffin wax on the edge to try to make it slicker. I don't really do any of that. I just give it a little pressure, just arm strength to make sure that it's seated. And then just find any outliers that aren't fitting with the pitch that you're hearing from the majority of them. All right, it sounded pretty good. There's no sustain right now, because there's no bottom head, it's basically a concert tom. Now, to get the actual tone out of the drum, we gotta put the bottom head on. All right, Evans, snare side, 300. This is a three mil snare side head. Again, every company makes a three mil snare side head, and everything we're talking about applies to whatever your favorite brand is. This is just mine. Big difference between the top head and the bottom head on a snare drum is you have the snare beds to deal with. We're just gonna set it right on there, go through a similar process to the other head, but understanding that this head is gonna have to deform at the snare beds to have an even tension all around. So it's not gonna look level. Once it's on there, if you set the drum on a table, there's gonna be high spots here and it's gonna be a little further in where the snares cross. Voila, we are on and we are finger tight. Now, this is where I have, a, I have a little bit of a different opinion about how to deal with snare side heads. Some prominent and verbose manufacturers really prefer to call it the snare side head and not the resonant head. I don't disagree with that. It doesn't resonate as a bottom head the way that a tom bottom head does, but it does control the resonance of the drum, depending on how tightly you tune it. And it'll really, really, really change the character of the drum, how it feels, how it sounds, how it plays. Something that I've learned from fussing endlessly with drums is that going way back to before we used Mylar heads, when we used to use rawhide heads, calf skin, you know, depending on the type of drum, other kinds of, of hide, is those heads can stretch and deform really easily. And so what they would use is a ruler to make sure when they first seated the drum head that it was on their level. Snare side heads suffer from a similar problem because they're so ridiculously thin. You can ruin one by tuning it wrong versus a batter head, like you can kind of mess with those more. But with a snare side head, where you start and what you do to it, there's things that can't really be undone. So to get the most life out of it, it's good to start as good as you can. This isn't about talking about certain heights that the rim should be or something like that. This is just leveling. And what I do is I find the height around the head and I make them all the same. This means that the height will be the same at the level part of the head as it is where the snare bed indents into the head. And once they're all the same height, we can start trying to tune the head. Once the head is level, going around and evening out the pitches is a little bit quicker of a thing. And since the drum will deform the head so much because snare side heads are so thin, we don't really need to use a mallet for this. You can just use your fingers. Just try to decide on pitch, pick a lug. I usually use the highest one and then match everybody to that. It won't take much, small amounts, quarter turns. As before, always doing the one across as well. All right, we're there. I'm going for kind of a medium pitch. There is no right or wrong pitch when it comes to snare side heads or batter heads. It's about the sound that you want. Starting with somewhere in the medium range, fairly tight, because I like the sound of a tighter one on this sort of drum. We've got both the heads on. Let's see what the top sounds like. What happened? We didn't touch this head, but now it sounds like it's not as in tune as it was before. That's because these two heads are talking to each other now through the drum. We have to help them get along. And that means now that even though this was in tune before, it also needs to get along with the bottom head. They need to interact together. They need to work together to make the sound. Once I get both heads on there, 
go back to the first head, check everything, even it out again. It may have settled a little bit since we put it on, but now we're gonna even it out again. And now we're evened out again, a little higher than where it was before, but still fine. The function of the bottom head in terms of the sound of the drum, it controls the sustain, basically. Uh, it's especially true of toms. People don't think of it so much for snare drums, but it's very true of snare drums. If you hear a big kind of fat backbeat with sort of rattle from the snares and that fatness just in the drum, where it almost sounds like it has reverb in it, that comes from the drum being able to resonate, which means really high snare side head, it's not gonna let that happen. This thing is gonna stop moving too, too soon. If we want a little more tone, we bring the bottom head down a little bit. We could go even further if we want to, but we're gonna stop here for now. Little snare wire side tip. As you can see, these wires have been on a drum before. You can run into trouble putting your wires back on with the same strings because there's a pretty fierce kink in this now from where they were. And if this kink isn't perfectly aligned when you cinch them down here, then your snares are gonna get bent like this and they're not gonna give you anything tasty out of the drum at all, it's gonna sound rancid. If you can replace the strings every time, that's great. If you can't, take the string, loop it across one of your lugs, and just run it back and forth a few times to get the kinks out. Now it's straight again, and we can put some new kinks in there. All right, let's talk about wires. This is why we did all that measuring earlier. The shape of the bottom head changes if the hoop's not level. And if the hoop's not level, and then the head is not evenly tensioned or not level, the wires can't lay flush on the head um, the way that they're designed to. And that means that you can run into choking problems, rattling problems, not a lot of sensitivity, a lot of like, extra buzz and just kind of junky noise. We go through all of that measuring to make sure that this head is a comfy bed for these things to lay in. You want to make sure that these wires are not twisted this way and that the distance from the end of the wires to the edge is the same when they're tensioned up. If they're not, you're going to run into some of those same problems. So now we can find out what this thing sounds like. So right now, we have kind of a broad sound. It's still articulate, but we can hear those wires coming away from that bottom head. That's that resonance we were talking about. When you hit it soft, it's a small sound. And when you hit it harder, they come away. When you hit a rim shot, cuts, but there's a little bit of extra oomph behind it. It's not too dry. This kind of sound goes to recordings and live microphones and the audience better than if you've got the bottom head cranked up or if you've got the top head, frankly, cranked up too. There's, there are good high sounds out of pretty much any drum, but they need to be resonant and the higher you go, the harder it is to keep that.